Hi everyone and welcome back to my virtual classroom. For our Maths Easy episode for today, we will be learning circle theorems. So let's get started. for today is about circle theorems. But before we go through the different theorems of circle, first let us unlock the keywords or the key features of our circle. The first one that we have is what we call our circumference. Our circumference is the distance around the circle. This is its perimeter. The next one is your diameter. Diameter is the distance across the circle which pass through the center. From one point to another point of your circumference passing through the center, again, is called your diameter. Then we have what we call our radius. Our radius is the distance from the center of the circle to any point on the circumference. A segment that is touching two points of your circumference but not passing through the center is what we call a chord. This is a line joining two points on the circumference. Chord divides the circle into two segments. The smaller one, we call it the minor segment, and the bigger area here, we'll call it the major segment. Then we have your arc. Your arc which is from one point of your circumference to another point is, or it's just a part of the circumference of your circle, is what we call our arc. Then we have our tangent line. Our tangent line is a line which touches our circumference at one point. From the word tangere, from Italian, which means to touch. Now let's go through the different circle theorem. The first theorem that you have is what we call a theorem where a tangent is perpendicular to a radius. Now when we say a tangent line is perpendicular to a radius, since our radius is touching one point of your circumference and your tangent is also touching one point of your circumference hence the angle that both your radius and your tangent line forms is 90 degrees the next one is the angle at the center is twice the angle at your circumference now how do we prove this let's say we have this point to your x and let's have this color coded both these angles here on one side of your triangle is yellow and the other side will be blue now since you have radius here radius here and radius here hence the sides the two sides of your triangle are both equal in measure let's start with a yellow angle the yellow angle will be, since it's a triangle and triangle's total, total angle measure is 180, then we can say 180. Let's say this angle here from the yellow side is our x, so 180 minus your x divided by 2, or times 1 half, will be the measure of your angle here for your yellow, because this is an isosceles, meaning two sides are angle, both the ang two sides are equal, both the angles on its base will be the same measure as well. Now let's go to the blue side. The blue side angle will be exactly the same. It will be 180 minus, let's say this is our y, y divided by 2 will be the measure of your angle blue. Hence, the whole angle measure of your yellow plus your blue will be equal to 180 minus half of your x plus half of your y. Therefore, the whole angle here on your 2x is actually twice this whole measure. 
That is the reason why the angle at the center is twice the angle of the circumference. Now let's move to the next theorem. The angle in a semicircle is 90 degrees. So since this is a straight line, hence this is 180 measurement. Going back to the first theorem, saying that la the last theorem, saying that the angle at the center is twice the angle of the circumference. So since half of this is 90, therefore, the angle at the circumference will be 90 degrees. Hence, the angle in a semicircle is 90 degrees. The next one is angles subtended by the same arc are equal. So let's say point A to point B is your arc. Both of this angle is facing or subtended on the same arc. Hence, we will say that angle X and angle Y will be equal in measure based on this theorem. Moving on, the theorem opposite angles in a cyclic quadrilateral has a sum of 180. Now let's go back to the theorem where the angle at the center is twice the angle on both sides. So let's say this is your x angle and then we have your y angle on one side then we have this as yellow angle and then we have the other side which is an orange angle let's have this orange and then we have the yellow all right so if you would notice here the y which is the blue right the y which is the blue and the orange here actually this one will be twice the measurement of the orange because of the theorem the angle at the center is twice the angle at the circumference the same thing will happen with your yellow and with your x so since it is twice so you have 2x plus 2y equals 360 therefore if I remove my 2 here, x plus y equals 180. Hence, my x angle plus my y angle is 180. That's the theorem opposite angles in a cyclic quadrilateral sum to up 280. The next one is the alternate angles in a segment are equal. So this angle here and this angle here will be of the same measure so x will be equal to y the next is tangents from a point are equal why is this equal that is the reason for the radius that is touching or meeting a tangent line will form 90 degrees will form 90 degrees so that's your radius Hence, your x here forms two right angle triangle. We go back to our Pythagoras theorem. Your c square equals to a square plus b square. And this c here is our hypotenuse. For this case, it is x. So therefore, x squared will be equal to r and then this unknown here. So since the other side is unknown, hence we will rearrange the formula. We will have square root of x squared minus r squared will be the measure of that side on, on, on another side it will be x squared minus r squared therefore tangents from a point will always be equal now let's try the following can you try to answer and find out what is the value of angle f g and h All right. Now, since we have O here, which is the center, then we know that this will be 90 degrees because it's a semicircle and the angle opposite to your semicircle will always be 90. And since both sides are equal, hence H will be H, 
will always be 90 or 180 sorry not 90 180 because the measure or the total angle measure of a triangle is 180 minus the 90 degrees divided by 2 will be your h which is 45 degrees hence your h here will be 45 degrees how about your g or your f now since your f here since since this is equal the sides here are equal therefore it is safe for me to say that that is also 55 degrees based on an isosceles triangle so since it is 55 opposite of a cyclic quadril quadrilateral is 90 sorry opposite of a quadrilateral cyclic quadrilateral sums up to 180 now since this is 90 so we have 180 minus 90 is 90 that means that the whole thing here f plus 55 should be equal to 90 so 55 will be transferred to the other side so 90 minus 55 f here will be 35 degrees hence f here will be 35 degrees now since this is again an isosceles triangle and since f is 50 35 then the other angle will also be 35 so 180 minus 35 minus 35 will be our g so 180 minus 35 minus 35 will be 110 degrees hence our g will be 110 degrees another example can you find the value of i j and k all right since this is 70 degrees and if i extend this this will be equal to let me just erase that if i extend this that will equal both sides of your angle to 35 degrees and we know that from the center radius with your tangent this forms 90 degrees hence the angle here 90 plus your 35 Subtract it, so 180 minus 90 minus 35 will be the measure of the other angle. So you will have minus 180, this will be 55 degrees. And since both sides are the same, hence your angle here will be 55 times 2. 55 times 2 will be 110 degrees. Now since this is 110 and the subtended angle is twice, this angle from the center will be twice, therefore K will be half of 110, which is 55 degrees. So the K here value will be 55. Now, if you have 110 here, and this is radius, which has exactly the same measure, then we can find the value of our J or our I here, this angle here. So we just need to subtract to find that angle it will be 180 minus 110 divided by 2. So 180 minus 110 divided by 2 will be 35 degrees. Hence, your J here, this is your J, J here will be 35 degrees. Now, since both of these angles are the same, and that is a 70 degrees here or 35 degrees here, and this will form 90 here so you will have 90 plus 35 let me erase this this is 90 degrees that's that's is that is forming a right angle triangle there so you have 90 plus your 35 180 minus this will be equal to your i so 90 plus 35 minus 180 will be 55 degrees or you could say and and also use the theorem that, that the alternate angles 
of your triangle from the center to your tangent will be equal as well. Thank you. I hope that you have learned something new today and if you're new to my class, please don't forget to click that subscribe button and hit that notification bell for your attendance today. And as always, as Teacher Maria would say, please do live your life to the fullest, learn something new every day, and love one another as how our God loves us. See you next episode for our Maths Easy series. Bye!